We have a bank holiday weekend for everybody apart from Scotland in the UK this weekend. And I thought we'd look at the water temperatures around the British Isles as we go into the weekend itself. Thanks for clicking on to the Friday edition of Bogan's European Outlook. Coolest waters in the shores surrounding the, uh, Scotland and the northern half of the British Isles. 13, 14 degrees quite widely around the coast. Uh, but of course, as you get south... Of the border, we're talking about 17 to 21 Celsius uh, off the Essex coast here along the south coast, 18 to 20 Celsius. Uh, quite pleasant water temperatures indeed if you happen to be taking a little dip in the English Channel, North Sea or the Irish Sea over the course of this weekend. Now, temperatures uh, this morning were fairly chilly across the northern half of the British Isles, down to 2.3 at Loch Lasgarnock, as you can see here. Uh, 4.5 at the uh, nearby uh, nearby Tain. Uh, I say nearby because it's the closest official Met Office station to where I live here in Invergordon actually. Uh, 12.8 at Glasgow and then even down into the southern portions of the British Isles it was a fresher morning for sure. No mid to high teens it was more down towards uh, 10 and even upper single figures. But certainly temperatures rose as we went through the course of today. Uh, relatively fresh across the north, but then down into England and Wales, we had temperatures into the low 20s, as you can see here, very pleasant, especially across the Greater London, temperatures nudging uh, the mid-20s, as you can see. But as we push towards the, the end of the weekend itself, now we do have an area of low pressure that will try to push into the UK, but pressure will be building overhead as we go through Saturday and then the Sunday. And that area of high pressure, the core of that high will actually shift to the north of the UK. And what, what will happen is we're going to start to see uh, winds coming in from the northeast and east eventually. And temperatures, that means that temperatures will be freshest on the east coast, warmest uh, further west and southwest you go. So you can see here off the GFS, as I skip through the course of this weekend, notice that area of rain getting very close to the Outer Hebrides, if you notice, but the pressure builds and essentially keeps that back from really getting in much inland across Scotland. But you notice here the high pressure building across the top, and there we have that east to north easterly flow. So like I say, coolest, breeziest across the east coast, anywhere from Caithness all the way down to Kent, further west, especially to the west of the Pennines and the Highlands, could see temperatures into the low, possibly the mid-20s here. But it is a fresh area of high pressure, so nothing particularly warm, especially when you've got winds coming in from the northeast. As we go into the new work week, we start to see changes taking place. The pressure starts to kind of ease off, still fairly strong up towards the fair wilds, as you can see here. But all the while, we've got low pressure starting to gather over Biscay. That then starts to kind of push northwards. We start to see the area of high pressure across the top break down. And as pressure eases, we then start to see the door opening to this area of low pressure over the Atlantic moving towards the British Isles. All the while, we're going to start to see the pressures lower enough, cooling the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. Incoming solar radiation, you enhance the upward motion within the atmosphere. Therefore, we start to see showers, possible local thunderstorms developing here. So you can st start to see a much more unsettled theme. Friday, 2nd of September, we start to see the breakdown in this high pressure pattern. And we start to increase the chances of rainfall. Also, notice that area of low pressure squeezing the isobars. We've got a fairly tight gradient between a 997 area of low pressure to the west of Ireland, strong area of high pressure up uh, over the Norwegian Sea. And we're going to see <coughs> winds uh, as that pressure gradient starts to tighten and the isobars squeezing together. We'll start to see some pretty strong winds coming in from the southeasterly direction here. So things start to break down into the early portion of September, according to the GFS and according to a few other models as well. Looking at the, the 850 temperatures, you can see here what is taking place here. So at this very moment in time, we've got relatively cooler in place over the British Isles, warmth uh, well to the south and the east of the UK. As we play through the loop, as you can see, we start to see the pressure building. 
but of course that area of high pressure is to the north and we do not see anything particularly warm moving into the British Isles. But early portions of next week we may see with winds turning from a north east to easterly direction that may allow something a little bit warmer to start pushing in off the continent here but you notice according to the GFS we've actually got an increasingly cooler air coming in at 850 across the British Isles uh, you know not that far away is those uh, the, the, the 20 Celsius or the 15 Celsius isotherm as you can see here so once again we're on that boundary here between cooler and warmer across the western portion of Europe here and we'll continue to play through the course of next week that area of high pressure continues to usher in cool air from the east. And you start to see, by the way, you know, proper cold air at, at 850 starting to show its hand over Scandinavia, northeastern Europe, and even over the western, over to the west, over the Atlantic, starting to see uh, colder air showing up on the charts. Maybe a little premature, I don't know, but that's very interesting. We've not seen that widespread sub zero. 850 temperature in a long time so it's maybe just a little reminder that autumn is not that far around the corner of course meteorological autumn begins on the 1st of september so of course i've showed you the man julian oscillation big player i believe in this summer overall it has been uh, largely favoring sinking air over our region of the world hence the hot dry conditions through much of the summer season Upward motion, of course, is representative in green and downward motion sinking air in the yellow and orange colors here. Notice here as we go towards the end of the month, we've got green showing up and that is temporarily pushing towards the British Isles. So therefore, I would be looking towards more unsettled weather. And if we do have warm settled conditions with greens eh, over our region of the world, it's usually living on borrowed time. And of course, as stated previously, those greens represent upward motion down towards the tropics, which we haven't seen really much this summer. And therefore, you would tend to look towards some sort of development within the tropical basin. Of course, the main development region of the tropics, relatively suppressed with drier, dustier off Africa. But uh, we are starting to see the hints of uh, systems coming off the African Eastley jet. Um, out into the Atlantic and there is uh, some indications of development starting to show up here as you can see as I play through the GFS here off the, the tropical tidbits site as I play you can see these areas of low pressure the green uh, strip here peeling off Africa out in the Atlantic that is of course the I ITCZ or the intertropical convergence zone and that of course it starts to show some sort of interesting things as these features here, one, two, even three systems now start to show some sort of development here. Something we just simply really haven't seen much of this summer season so far. Keeping your eyes on that feature over the Yucatan Peninsula because it looks as if the GFS at least tries to deepen it out over the very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Temperatures in excess of 30 Celsius or 86 Fahrenheit. Uh, even 88 Fahrenheit actually, uh, well 31 is 88, um, 32 of course being 90 degrees. But look at this here, very interesting, it's showing the development of a hurricane, very strong hurricane at that. Of course models can go a little bit berserk in terms of development but it looks as if it's trying to take a system into the far north of Mexico close to the Rio Grande Valley of Texas here and uh, that would certainly be a big deal indeed. Notice back across the uh, open Atlantic, we've got a system here uh, moving to the north of the Leeward Islands. Got another feature over the Central Atlantic and another one just to the west of Cape Verde here. So certainly this would correlate quite nicely with the upward motion, a more favourable phase of the Man-Julian Oscillation for the tropical Atlantic. So that's something we need to keep an eye on. The reason why, and you notice here a deep area of low pressure over the British Isles here. So we see the kind of it collapse in the height field overall. We start to see a more active, robust tropical uh, wave train. We also see low pressure more over the 
over the British Isles and western portions of Europe here. The reason why I'm showing you the tropics here in a European outlook, if you haven't already, if you have not, if you're kind of new to the channel and you perhaps don't understand uh, the ins and outs of of weather, the connection between between the tropics and the mid mid latitudes, is that some of these tropical systems that develop that have a lot of heat and moisture associated, and therefore, I believe anyway, when you start to cool uh, portions of the more the mid latitudes and the high latitudes here, you start to uh, you know draw your attention to the tropics, and of course, uh, tropical systems are nature's way of of taking heat out of the tropics and redistributing it over the mid latitudes, over the towards the pole basically. And of course, with a lot of heat stored up over the northern ocean basins and within the atmosphere over the continents of, of the northern hemisphere, I don't think there's been as much need, in a sense, from a, a nature point of view for development of tropical systems. But then once you start to see a shift taking place further north and the Manjulian Oscillation goes into a more favourable phase, you start to see the tropics becoming more active and that is exactly what it looks like we're going to start to see now notice here pay close attention to the fact that these systems uh with the azores high pressure here uh over this region here over the azores funny enough we've got these systems here that take that kind of northward jog with a weakness in the bermuda high so basically you've got the mid-atlantic ridge semi-permanent uh, atmospheric feature You've got the Bermuda High over the western portion of the Atlantic and the Azores High over the east. Now we've got a weaker Bermuda High, stronger Azores High. Any sort of system that tries to develop, it, develop, it then turns, finds that weakness within the atmosphere and starts to take a northward turn. Now the important aspect about these systems trying to move northwards is it then interacts with the jet stream further north and therefore we start to see a shift in the upper air pattern that can go either way it could boost high pressure over the british isles uh, bringing warmer conditions better weather or it can have the opposite effect and sometimes these systems although the trend the, the transition into extra tropical systems become cold core areas of low pressure of course within the tropics they're warm core but then as they interact with colder water they start to pick up more wind shear a more um, hostile upper level environment of course within the tropics it needs to be a nice settled environment you know nice convergence at the surface divergence aloft with high pressure on top but of course as they interact with the with the jet stream they interact with colder waters the basically the makeup of these systems change and become normal areas of low pressure baroclinic areas of low pressure that can lead to areas of low pressure, enhanced areas of low pressure with warm tropical air that gets all the way up towards the British Isles and can produce gale force winds and stormy conditions across the British Isles. That starts to take place more as we go through September and into October. X hurricanes, X tropical storms become a part of our weather really as we go into this time frame so we're going to start to keep our eyes on this because you notice here areas of low pressure on the chart because of the man julian oscillation becoming more favorable that starts to change the dynamics that starts to change the forecast and what we're talking about here in the channel so let's watch this space uh, so anyway a lot of things uh, to talk about a lot of things to look at hope you have a great uh, bank holiday weekend if you live in the areas that have the bank holiday weekend enjoy it that and uh, i certainly hope that you enjoyed today's video please like share and if you haven't already done so hit that subscribe button and stay tuned lots more to come hope you have a great rest of your friday bye for now